Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how you can deploy a uh, server-side rendered Next.js app together with uh, serverless uh, web hosting. But it's not just that, we're also going to add a uh, REST API to the mix. So that means that uh, your Next.js app is going to automatically be connected to a REST API. First things first, let's try to understand what is it that we're actually trying to do here. So what we're trying to do is to basically replace your uh, monthly Vercel subscription. And instead of that, you're basically just going to go on a pay as you go plan. Now, with that being said, AWS also gives you 12 months absolutely free. And we're going to do that by deploying our apps on AWS with CodeSmash. And uh, CodeSmash is basically just a one-time payment platform that uh, deploys your apps on your uh, private AWS account. So the best part is, even if you don't want to use CodeSmash at some point, your apps and your data are always going to be yours. So there's basically no lock-in whatsoever. And since CodeSmash only deploys serverless uh, AWS services, that means that when your app is idle, you're not paying for anything. In other words, guys, you're basically getting unlimited apps, unlimited deployments for pretty much free. So let's get started with deploying the REST API. Just make sure to select it right here. And uh, now just go and uh, add a name to your app. You can call it anything you want. Once you're done, just uh, make sure you uh, click on deploy. And this is going to take just a couple of moments. And uh, once it's done, you'll be able to see your uh, REST API in the list of all the apps. There you go. So we're pretty much done. You can see your REST API right here. And uh, let's go and uh, check it out. So here you can see that there's a API builder. So you can click here and uh, let's take it for a spin. The most important thing is uh, to add the routes to your API and uh, then they'll be uh, available through this here URL. So let's go ahead and uh, add a uh, user route. It's going to generate all the necessary routes just by clicking add routes. And the only thing you have to do is uh, redeploy the uh, API. Once that's done, you will be able to actually go and uh, test it. So the thing that we're going to do right now is basically just uh, add some data. So let's go and check this uh, post route. I'm gonna add an ID of one and we're gonna add a new user. So this user is gonna have some data. For example, the user is gonna have a name and some info. And uh, let's go and uh, give the user a name. And let's also add some info so we know what this user does. We'll actually display all this info on our Next.js app later on. Let's go and add the user. Okay, so this is success. This, this means that uh, the user has been added. Let's, uh, let's add one more user. Just add, just add the info as well. That's fine. So one more. Okay, we're going to add the name. and the info as well. And when we're done, we're just going to add the user as well. So once we've added all the users, let's just check the get route and test it. And there you go. So all the users are now in your database. This is perfect. So the only thing that we have to do now is uh, make sure that this uh, API actually works in the browser. So let's check it out. Let's add the user route and there you go. The data that uh, we've added to the database is also being shown when the uh, API URL is invoked. But the thing is, we don't want to invoke the data through an additional API. We want to host this API together with our web hosting. So let's go and uh, deploy 
the web hosting that you see right here. So previously we only had static web hosting and now we have the dynamic one as well. So you can select this one and the only thing you have to do right now is just uh, select your REST API. Once you've selected the REST API, uh, you can just go and uh, name your web hosting and then it's time to deploy. So once it has been deployed, you will actually be able to access your REST API through this web hosting. So this is going to make it much easier for you to work with your Next.js app. So yeah, our hosting is right here and uh, let's have a look. We can now see the most important part and uh, it's the URL. So this is our CDN. This is going to globally distribute all our files. So let's uh, go and have a look. Currently there is nothing here. But the most important thing is that uh, if you actually go and look at the uh, API route, you're actually going to be able to see the data. So let's go and have a look. And there you go. You can see the same data as if you were accessing the API directly. Okay, so let's go back to Code Smash now. So now that we have everything set up, the only thing that's left to do is to actually deploy our Next.js app. So you can go to the Next.js part right here. And uh, previously we had only client side, but now we also have the server side Next.js. So select this one and you can now see the select web hosting part, which is marked red. And we are now going to make sure to select this one. And let's just choose the one that we've created. This one right here. And we're going to name our app. And that's fine. So now it's time to deploy. So these are our apps right here and the newest one is obviously the Next.js app. So let's, uh, let's click on this one. Okay, so you can see the most important part here is the web hosting integration and uh, it shows us the same URL. So you don't have to jump between the apps to uh, work on this thing. And uh, just, uh, just make sure that every time you deploy your uh, Next.js app, you make some uh, changes, you actually also restart your hosting. And guys, once this is done, we can finally go and check our Next.js website. So let's go and uh, check the actual URL. And there you go, we have finally deployed a uh, server-side Next.js app. You can see the template is by Codesmash. And now that this is working, let's actually go and check uh, how the API works by clicking on the users right here. So these are the users that we had added through our API. And uh, we're just pulling this data directly from the API. And you can see that you can see actually each specific user. You can also uh, edit the data. Let's just try to do that. And just by clicking on the update info, it's going to bring us back to the main page. And let's just check again if this has been stored. Yeah, so you can see the data right here. Okay, let's go back. Let's just try to add another user. Okay, we're going to give give this guy a name and just some additional info and let's just add this new user okay that's it this user has been added let's go back and you can see the new user right here so this is all going directly through the API you don't have to configure anything else code smash takes care of everything and you can even delete the user if you want so you can see that the user is not there so you can basically just go and uh, start working on your app right away so if we go back now uh, the question now that you probably have is how are you going to actually develop this how are you going to work on this so it's actually quite simple since your code is in your github account the only thing you have to do is uh, just go back to your uh, code smash app 
right here and you see the get get part so just click on this one and uh, go to your terminal and uh, do a git clone with the copied URL and just let it clone into your uh, local folder and make sure you open this in uh, Visual Studio okay so this is pretty much your app this is your uh, Next.js app so what do we want to do right now well we want to run it locally and uh, actually work on this app let's uh, let's first just install all the npm packages so just npm i this is that's going to be uh, enough so once that's done we're just going to start the server locally and see if we can uh, make some changes to this app yeah this is looking fine uh, let's run let's run this locally perfect okay so it's running on local host uh, 3000 and the only thing that we need to do right now is just uh, visit this URL okay we can go and open a new tab let's uh, let's have a look okay this is this is uh, looking good so this is running locally which is perfect so let's now try to do some changes and see if we can actually uh, reflect those changes uh, on the app. We're actually going to do something uh, really simple. If you go and open this uh, public folder, you're actually going to see some images here. So all the images that you need are stored here. So let's take uh, a new one. Let's take a new image. These. Uh, right here yeah it's uh, an image of uh, some food so what we're going to do is display this on our front page so we have a previous image here the Next.js logo so let's just copy this and paste it right here okay this is perfect uh, let's do some modifications removing the uh, inverted colors and change the path to food.jpg this should actually be enough so let's see okay we might make it uh, a bit bigger so it's easier to see but that should be enough okay let's uh, let's save this now and uh, let's see if this has been updated on our side yeah guys so as you can see this is working just fine so the question is how do we get these changes to our actual website so these changes need to be reflected here so how easy is it to actually uh, get this running so the only thing you actually have to do is uh, commit the changes to your repository like this so just uh, sync the changes and go back to code smash and uh, once you're there you'll notice that uh, it's actually going to start building automatically so there you go you can clearly see the spinner is right here this means that uh, your project automatically started building and uh, once it's done once this is complete just go and uh, restart the hosting and what this is gonna do it's actually going to make sure that uh, all the changes are now available on your web hosting okay guys so this is looking good now uh, let's go back to our website and we should be able to see the changes and okay let's just let it reload quickly so there you go you can see the image right here it's uh, it's basically that simple this is all automated and uh, your code is uh, updated in your github repository as well and just to confirm let's go to our web hosting and let's scroll down to the services and we can check our s3 bucket where our files are stored so let's wait a while for this to load and we're gonna go and uh, see all our files so they're in the uh, next folder let's go to the static folder as well so you can see all our static files including the food.jpg which got copied over automatically so you don't even have to worry about that because the code smash build process is gonna do it for you so guys this is pretty much it for this video I mean there are still a lot of features that need to be added for example a custom domain that you can uh, set up on your own 
and also the login page so that your users can log in using uh, Google, Apple or uh, any other provider. But that's it for this time and uh, if you have any questions or suggestions just uh, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. So uh, I'll see you guys next time.